What's going on guys? So I am out here at Ron Hoover RV and Marine in Rockport, Texas, and we're going to take a look at this enormous Elk Ridge 38 RK from Heartland. This is a huge fifth wheel, and there's a lot of things about this that you might like, so hang tight. I'll be right back. All right, before we go any further, let's take a look at the numbers on this unit. So this has a gross vehicle weight rating of 16,000 pounds, cargo capacity of 3,535 pounds. That's a lot more than I thought it would have. Rides on twin 7,000 pound axles, 16 inch F rated tires. This is a big fifth wheel. Anyways, let's take a look at the outside of it first and then we'll move towards the inside. So one thing that they do that's really unique is they give you these really interesting storage options up front in the Elk Ridge. This one meets the two side storage units that you typically would see are the basement storage areas. And then below it, you have a spot for a generator. And then over here, you have all of your hydraulic connections, your inverter, and your batteries. Your propane tanks are located right here on each side. And then you have your pass-through storage right here. Good size pass-through storage and made a little bit more convenient with the fact that you can access it up front. Does not have a drop frame. That's why this part is elevated right here. A drop frame would make this much larger and completely unobstructed by that. You have a very nice completely sealed off wet bay. Very cool. I love to see wet bays that are sealed off like that. Relatively thin baggage doors. Would have liked to see a little bit thicker door in this unit. Coming around, it's back your water heater, back your furnace. This has the hydraulic level up six point auto leveling system. Has a 12 inch I-beam frame with rack and pinion slides. Very nice. Coming around this way. This rides on F-rated Trailer King tires, no suspension equalizer. Those are upgrades I would recommend doing, you know, as some of your first upgrades. Maybe put nice road armor, easy flex, you know, there's several from Moride. Upgrade to something suspension based. Put the heavy duty shackle straps and wet bolts in. Relatively low cost upgrade. If you love the floor plan, that's pretty easy to do. Trailer King tires, I would also upgrade those relatively soon. Rack and pinion slide back here as well. Coming around, incandescent lighting in the back, has a two inch accessory rack receiver. So this is where you'd put like a bike rack or a small flat rack to hold anything you might bring with you. Not rated to tow a trailer though, so keep that in mind. Looking up top here, it is wired for a Furion wireless backup camera and it does have a ladder installed to get on the roof for servicing. Coming around to this side, also rack and pinion slide over here has standard framed windows. A lot of people appreciate those, get better cross ventilation with those than you do frameless, but frameless look really good too. It's more of a cosmetic thing though. This already has the Moride step above step system on it as well. Asdell composite side panel. So this is really cool, the fact that there's Asdell panels on this unit. That's something that is relatively new to this specific model of fifth wheel, but it's really nice to see that they put them on there. Also, two inch thick laminated sidewalls, a little bit thicker than some other units in the industry. Not groundbreaking, but it's definitely a great plus, especially considering these units tend to be a little bit less expensive. Let's take a look inside of this 38 RK. So, all the rave right now, our rear kitchen units. And this has a really cool rear kitchen layout. You can see the living room area right here. Nice wide love seats. They're a little bit wider than traditional love seats, so you can fit three people on each one. You could sprawl out and relax on one unless you're super tall. And you have plenty of room in the middle, so these fold out into two large beds. So if you have guests with you, it's a place for them to sleep. You have a nice 55 inch TV already installed. Lots of cabinetry, nice dark tones to it as well, mixed in with some lighter, more neutral accents. Has the MCD day-night roller shades already installed. That's really nice. And this is a rear kitchen floor plan with a huge rear kitchen. 
Now, a lot of people are concerned about throwing a refrigerator in the back. So I asked some industry professionals about that and if that increases the failure rate of these refrigerators. And what I've been told is that it doesn't. Um, now, I don't know how factual that is, but I asked a lot of people. And every single time I said, have you seen a higher failure rate when the refrigerator is in the back of the RV? And they said they haven't. So my judgment or my theory on it has always been place it more towards the center near the axles so it doesn't transfer as much momentum and inertia to the unit whenever you're going over bumps and you don't have to worry about damaging it. But again, industry experts say that when testing, they haven't seen any additional failure of residential or any refrigerator when placed in the back of an RV. I'd love your feedback and comments on that. What's your experience been? Now, this is a really cool and interesting refrigerator. It's becoming more and more popular in the industry because it replaces a traditionally similar sized gas electric unit. But what a lot of people like about this specific one is that it's relatively easy to remove from the RV if it breaks or if you have a problem where it needs to be replaced because it's not as large as a full size residential refrigerator. But you still get a tremendous amount of space in this thing. I mean, it's not a small refrigerator unit. So plenty of space, um, just a really great refrigerator. At least that's what I've been told. Lots of storage and very deep storage as well. And you got it just about everywhere. That's kind of the perk of these rear kitchen units is how large of a kitchen they can provide you while at the same time giving you a ton of storage. You can see this has the very nice residential style suburban stove oven range full-size residential microwave unit, nice four-seat freestanding dinette, and a lot of people will appreciate how this area here at the sink is facing into the living room area. So you got plenty of room to see what's going on and communicate with people there. Okay, working our way up front into the master bathroom area has a very nice two-piece shower stall plenty of space inside of here a lot of countertops nice porcelain foot flush toilet a lot of storage this is a very impressive restroom and plenty of place for towels and coming over here taking a look at the king size bed very nice you have about a foot of space on this side and then probably a little bit more on that side because the cabinets are pushed out a hair Nice full depth slide, which means you're going to have a ton of space here between the bed and the dresser. So that's really nice. And on this side, you can see they use a really nice darker finished wall here, which I think breaks up the color. It looks really nice. And then up front, this unit has a massive front closet area. Very, very nice space. And you have plenty of space for a washer and dryer here as well. Stackable unit. You can walk into this closet. That's how big it is. Plenty of room in here. Nice dresser space, six drawers here. Very cool. Sliding door here for you. Anyways, I'd love to know your feedback. What do you think about these units? What do you think about these rear kitchen floor plans? I know all the manufacturers are coming out with them and they seem to be very popular. And again, if they don't put any additional strain on the refrigerator, there's really no reason not to build this floor plan, but I'd love your opinion. Let me know what you think. Anyways, guys, if you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very soon.